The AMA's CPT updates for 2022 are coming. Are you ready? There are 249 new codes, 63 deletions, and 93 revisions. In addition to all of that, there are 405 editorial changes. COVID-19 is still a hot topic in the healthcare community, and you should not be surprised that there are more changes. And stay tuned as I also provide you with information on another addition to your toolkit. Trust me, you will be glad you watch. Oh, and stay until the end of the video, and I'll give you some hot off the press information regarding new diagnosis codes and guidance. Hey there, and welcome. If you are new here, you don't know me yet. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. And on this channel, I provide you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder. As a result of my straightforward strategies, tips, an optimistic approach to education and learning, I've served hundreds of students and helped them to transform to become certified medical coders who have developed dynamic careers in the business of healthcare and are valuable resources in their own right. Consider subscribing to my channel to get the latest and greatest information and tips you need to become a certified marketable medical coder. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications of my weekly videos. As we are still experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic, there are 15 new vaccine specific codes that are part of the updated 2022 CPT manual. As you may remember, a few vaccine codes were added for use in November of 2020. Before I dive deeper into the information and a wonderful new tool to add to your toolkit to assist with these vaccine codes, let me remind you of the updates and revisions to the 2022 official guidelines for coding and reporting of ICD-10-CM related to COVID-19. You know, we now have code U09.9, post-COVID-19 condition, unspecified. Let's specifically look at sections 1.C.1.G.1, parts G, J, and M. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. Okay, let's break down that naming convention. First, section one is for conventions, general coding guidelines, and chapter specific guidelines. Then C is for chapter specific coding guidelines. Next, the one is for chapter one, certain infectious and parasitic diseases, sections A00 through B99, U07.1 and U09.9. Then we have G and it is for coronavirus infections. And then one is for COVID-19 infection, specifically infection due to SARS-CoV-2. Now we will explore the specific parts G, J, and M. So in G, signs and symptoms without definitive diagnosis of COVID-19 for patients presenting with any signs and symptoms associated with COVID-19, such as a fever, etc. But a definitive diagnosis has not been established, you assign the appropriate codes for each of the presenting signs and symptoms, such as R0.5 acute cough or R0.9 cough unspecified, R0.6.02 shortness of breath or R50.9 fever unspecified. 
If a patient with signs and symptoms associated with COVID-19 also has an actual or suspected contact with or exposure to COVID-19, then you would assign Z20.822, contact with and suspected exposure to COVID-19 as an additional code. Now let's look at J. Follow-up visit after COVID-19 infection has resolved. So for individuals who previously had COVID-19 without residual symptoms or conditions and are being seen for follow-up evaluation and COVID-19 test results are negative, you would assign code Z09 encounter for follow-up examination after completed treatment for conditions other than the malignant neoplasm and Z86.16 personal history of COVID-19. For follow-up visits for individuals with symptoms or conditions related to previous COVID-19 infection, see guideline 1.C.1.G.1.M which we'll look at now. <laughs> Post COVID-19 condition for a sequela of COVID-19 or associated symptoms or conditions that develop following a previous COVID-19 infection, you would assign a code or codes for the specific symptom or symptoms or conditions related to the previous COVID-19 infection. If known, and code U09.9 post COVID-19 condition unspecified. Code U09.9 should not be assigned for manifestations of any active or current COVID-19 infection. If a patient has a condition or conditions associated with previous COVID-19 infections and develops a new active or current COVID-19 infection, code U09.9 may be assigned in conjunction with code U07.1, COVID-19, to identify that the patient also has a condition associated with a previous COVID-19 infection. Codes for specific conditions associated with the previous COVID-19 infection and codes for manifestations of the new or active or current COVID-19 infection should also be assigned. Okay, now about the vaccine codes. The AMA collaborated with the CDC to develop the vaccine specific codes. Tracking of these services are very important and these codes incorporate the specialized tracking needs of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services or CMS. The 2022 CPT code set also includes an appendix for one-stop access to all the codes for COVID-19 vaccine reporting. But there's more, hold on, let's look at the codes. <laughs> for Pfizer, 30 micrograms slash 0.3 milliliters dosage, the vaccine code is 91300. For the administration of the booster, the code is 0004A for the first dose, the code is 0001A, for the second dose is 002A, and the third dose is 003A. For Moderna 100 micrograms slash 0.5 milliliter dosage, the vaccine code is 0 or is 91301. For the administration of the first dose, the code is 0011A, the second dose is 0012A, and the third dose is 0013A. For AstraZeneca, chimpanzee adenovirus Oxford 1 vector 5 by 10 to the 10th power viral particles slash 0.5 milliliters dosage, the vaccine code is 91302. For the administration of the first dose, the code is 0021A and the second dose is 0022A. For Janssen, 
virus type 26 vector 5 by 10 to the 10th power viral particles slash 0.5 milliliters dosage. The vaccine codes is 91303. For the administration of the single dose, the code is 0031A. For Novavax, recombinant spike protein nanoparticle saponin based adjuvant 5 micrograms slash 0.5 milliliters dosage, the vaccine codes is 91304. For the administration of the first dose, the code is 0041A and the second dose is 0042A. For Pfizer Trisucrose formulation, 30 micrograms slash 0.3 milliliters dosage, the vaccine code is 91305. For the administration of the booster, the code is 0054A. For the first dose, the code is 0051A. The second dose is 0052A. And the third dose is 0053A. And lastly, for Moderna, 50 micrograms slash 0.25 milliliters dosage, the vaccine code is 91306. For the administration of the booster dose, the code is 0064A. Okay, now the moment you have been waiting for. The AMA also in collaboration with the CDC have designed a new tool for your toolkit. This tool helps you determine both the vaccine code and the administration code, which as we have just seen is vaccine and dose specific. The link to the tool is in the description box below. All you need to do is answer a few questions and voila, you have the codes. The tool also provides the National Drug Code or NDC that identifies human drugs in the US. You can find the number on the vial containing the vaccine. Keep in mind, the number may be required on claims submitted to third party payers. So on the left hand of the screen, you will find the questions. On the right, you will find all available codes. It looks a little different on a mobile, mobile device, such as a cell phone or iPad, but the concept is still the same. The first question, do you know the vaccine manufacturer or brand name? Let's click yes and select Moderna from the drop down menu. Next question, what dose is being administered? Hmm, let's select second. And to the right, we are provided 91301 vaccine code and 0012A vaccine administration code. How cool is that? I love it when we have helpful tools that we can add to the toolkit. You have learned about the AMA's CPT updates for 2022. You have also learned about the post COVID-19 condition diagnosis code U09.9 and the coding guidance for this code and COVID-19. And lastly, you have learned all about the new vaccine and vaccine administration codes for COVID-19 and the wonderful tool that you can add to your toolkit. Questions of the day. What do you think about the new tool? Handy, huh? <laughs> Please share your experience and thoughts in the comments below. I will be providing a full 2022 ICD-10 CM coding guideline update. You know, the new codes will be in use right around the corner starting October 1st. So be on the lookout for the announcements. Also, if you are new to coding and or preparing for your certification exam next year, this information is still helpful for you and will give you a preview of some topics that could be included on your exam. Remember, the exams like to focus some of the questions on new codes and guidance. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. Providing you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder and if you are interested in more information on these tips and others on how to become a certified marketable medical coder,
Well then check out these videos and check this out. Are you interested in medical coding, but not sure where to start and scared of wasting time and resources? Let me help you with the right steps to become a certified marketable medical coder. Learn more at bit.ly slash five steps coder. If you liked the video, don't forget to let me know by hitting the thumbs up, hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you are informed every week when I upload new content. I love hearing from you. So let me know you were here by stopping by to say hi, providing a comment or even asking a question. You can also give me a little love by sharing this video on your social media platforms. Tag me in your video share at PRN Coding EDU. Let's stay connected and connect others. And now for the hot off the press information, <laughs> and it's literally hot off the press. Effective April 1st, 2022, ICD-10-CM and PCS code updates will occur on April 1st of each year, in addition to October 1st. Yes, that's twice, twice in a year. So the existing established process will be used for the update, and the code update processes will involve the release of new code files, coding guidelines, and coding advice both in April and for October. So CMS is recommending a phased in approach with limited April 1st code updates. Additional information will continue to be provided in connection with the ICD-10 coordination and maintenance committee meeting process and the annual IPPS rulemaking. This is huge so stay tuned aren't you glad you stayed <laughs> if you want to learn more about the wonderful world of health information medical coding and or compliance then watch one of these videos remember be safe be kind and don't wish for it work for it until next time take care and thanks so much for watching